guys, welcome back to Banter with Babs. Today, I'm gonna to talk about how to study for the LSAT effectively. I'm gonna share my specific study routine with you guys, and I'm gonna break up today's video into four parts. Number one, we're gonna talk about how to make an effective schedule. Number two, we're gonna talk about what makes a good drill. Number three, how to take a practice test effectively. And number four, how to blind reveal. A couple of disclaimers before I get started today. First and foremost, I'm not one of those people that was able to break 170 in three months. Studying for the LSAT took me a really long time to get to my goal score. As a little bit of background, my diagnostic score was a 161, and it took me one full year of studying to get to a 175. The next thing is that when I was studying for the LSAT, I was working a full-time job as a high school science teacher. So it might not actually take you a full year of studying to get to your goal score. It actually might take you a shorter amount of time if you have less work responsibilities. On that note, let's get started. Okay guys, creating and committing to a study schedule for the LSAT is serious business. And I'm actually gonna show you guys how I used my planner in the year of 2019 up until I took the LSAT and show you how I laid out my calendar, my weekly routine, and how I track my progress throughout my studies. Let's get started. All right, guys, so here's a look at what the month of April back in 2019 looked like for me. As you can see, my calendar is decorated with these yellow highlights at the top of most of the days. And what these yellow highlights represent for me are days in which I drilled for 30 minutes or more. It's really helpful to have some sort of visual apparatus as you are tracking your progress throughout the month because it keeps you accountable. I can easily see that in the month of April, I only missed out on two days of drilling and I was very consistent in my study. Studies. In addition to tracking which days I drilled, I also wrote down which days I took practice tests. Back in the month of April, I was really hitting my stride when it came to practicing for the LSAT, and I was very comfortable with taking at least one practice test a week up until test day. Now let's take a look at what a typical week in April looked like for me. All right, guys, this is what a week in April typically looked like for me. As you can see, I love to color code my weekly activities and I chose the color yellow for my LSAT drills. In addition to tracking the amount of time that I drilled each day, I also wrote down what kind of drill it was. So for example, on Monday, you can see very clearly that I drilled a logical reasoning section from practice test 80 and I missed about three problems. On Tuesday, I drilled logic games. What sort of logic games were they? They were grouping games, order games, and mixed sets. Throughout the week, I typically like to evenly spread out what sorts of sections I'm practicing. So I wanna make sure I get a good mix of logical reasoning, logic games, and reading comprehension in there. For this particular week, I focused a little more heavily on logical reasoning, but it just really depends on what you feel like you need to work on more. Just make sure that you're still practicing the other sections that you're good at as well. For practice test days, I like to write down the score that I got for that particular practice test, what practice test it was. So in this case, I made it 174 on practice test 77. And then that extra fifth section that I put in there to mimic test day was actually from practice test 80 and it was a logical reasoning section and I missed one question from there. So typically when a week is over, I like to take all this data and transfer it to the back of my planner in which I have a series of tables and graphs to mark my progress. So in this table here, I listed out every single practice test that I was planning on taking and what I missed for each of the logical reasoning sections, each logic game section, and each reading comprehension section. And of course, I recorded my scores and the dates in which I took those practice tests. I had a little line graph down here to mark my progression in reading comprehension because it is something that I struggled with at the beginning of my studies. And I even had an extra review table right here for problems that I struggled with quite a bit. To show you guys other ways you can track your progress, I actually had tables in the back here for other types of questions that I wanted to make sure I tackled before test day. As you can see, I didn't get through all of it, but what matters is that I had the apparatus available to me and keeping me accountable throughout my studies and making sure that I was making some sort of progress up until test day. Now, what ultimately matters at the end of the day is that you are picking something and sticking to it. A passion planner may not be for you. Maybe you're more of a free spirit and you like working with bullet journals exclusively, or maybe you really enjoy 
digital planners. Just pick what you think will work best for you and stick to it and use it to keep yourself accountable throughout your LSAT studies. This is just one way to do it. Your own style might look a little bit different. Let's get to the subject of drilling. How long should you drill and what makes an effective drill? In terms of time, I really suggest that you drill for at least 30 minutes a day. You can call your mom for 30 minutes, you can eat your lunch in 30 minutes, and you can definitely study for the LSAT for 30 minutes per day. Next up, what does an effective drill look like? A drill can pretty much look like anything you want it to look like as long as you're spending those 30 minutes effectively. Here are some examples of what you can do. One common way to drill is by taking one section from an older practice test, taking that section in less than 35 minutes, and then reviewing that entire section. This is what I found to be the most typical way to drill, and it's perfectly fine, but if you do go this route, you want to make sure that you're alternating between the different kinds of LSAT section types per day. So for example, if you do a logic game section on Monday, then Tuesday you might want to do a reading comprehension or logical reasoning section instead. That way you're exercising all of your LSAT muscles equally. Another way that you can effectively drill is by using Khan Academy's free LSAT prep website. They have these little drill sets, they're called extra practice tasks that you can work through in about 15 minutes. So I would just combine two of those in a day to get your 30 minutes in. And lastly, a more unconventional way to drill is by making your own section. What I would like to do is I would take maybe one reading comprehension passage, one logic game, and about seven logical reasoning questions, stick them together into my own section and work through that in 35 minutes or less. This is a really great way to exercise all of your LSAT muscles in that 30 minute segment for your day. The only thing about this last type of drill is that it is a little more time consuming to prepare the day before. So you wanna make sure that you have everything printed out beforehand and ready to go for the next day that you plan to drill. Now let's move on to the subject of practice tests. The key to taking an effective practice test is by simulating realistic testing conditions at home. Now here's the caveat. A lot of people think that starts the minute you take the practice test at home, but really simulating that realistic environment starts the morning of, if not the night before you take your practice test. Now let's walk through the steps together. When you've decided when you wanna take your official LSAT, so for example, I wanted to take my LSAT in June or July, I knew that the summer LSAT test started at 12.30 p.m. So I would plan my day around a 12.30 p.m. practice start time. I would wake up around 9 a.m. to make sure that I was awake and fresh enough by the time that 12.30 p.m. rolled around. You want to do the same thing. You want to find out when your goal test is actually going to start and then wake up at the same time that you would on official test day. That sounds like a lot of work, but trust me, it'll pay off. It'll get you in the habit of of the routine for test day. So not only do you wanna wake up at the same time that you plan to on test day, you also wanna do the same things. So you wanna eat the same sort of breakfast. Myself, I start off my day with a toasted bagel, scrambled eggs, and orange juice on every day that I took a practice test. You also wanna wear the same thing that you plan to on test day. So on practice test days, I would wear leggings, a t-shirt, and some sort of cardigan, the same thing that I was gonna wear the day of the official test. Now, once you're ready to take your test, you want to take it in a quiet environment like an office or your bedroom. That doesn't mean you want dead silence when you take the test though. I would have some sort of app running with really annoying background noise as you take the practice test. There are a lot of apps and videos out there, I'll link some down below, but you want to simulate testing conditions as closely as possible. That includes the sound of flipping pages or scratching pencils or even someone sneezing and coughing. You want to be prepared for that on test day because on test day, that happened to me and I wasn't phased by it because I was already simulating those sorts of sounds at home. Now there are a couple of things you want to keep in mind when you take a practice test at home. Number one, you want to use a realistic LSAT proctor. There are a lot of really good videos on YouTube of realistic LSAT proctors that say what your proctors will say on the day of the test, give you realistic section times, and give you a realistic break time. I'll link some of those down below. And number two, you want to make sure that you're taking five section tests, not four section tests at home. And that's because on the day of the test, they will give you five sections, one of which will be a fake, but you still want to 
simulate that realistic testing condition at home in order to build up your stamina realistically for test day. So what I would suggest is that when you have your practice test ready, take a sample section from an older practice test and blend that in with your new practice test in order to get those five sections you need to build up your stamina. After you're done taking your practice test, you want to relax. Your brain is gonna be fried after those three and a half hours. You do not wanna go straight into blind review. You do not wanna go straight into scoring. The best thing you can do for yourself is take the space to recharge and be ready for blind review the next morning. Next up, we have blind review. Blind review is the most important part of your LSAT practice, in my opinion. I really do think 50% or more of your learning comes from blind review. Now, there are a couple of guidelines for when it comes to blind review, and you can check out those videos that are dedicated exclusively to that from other channels, but I'm gonna introduce to you a more loosey-goosey way that I went about it. Take from it what you will, and then see which method works best for you. When it came to blind review, I would actually prepare for it as I took my practice test. When I would take a practice test, I would circle whichever question that I struggled with. So maybe it took me too long or maybe I wasn't sure about my answer. And then the next day when I was ready for blind review, I would review all of the questions that I circled first and then see why did I get it wrong or why did I get it right. I highly recommend referencing online forums for this portion. So I would often reference Manhattan prep forums or power score forums when I was reviewing those questions that I had circled on the day of the test. After reviewing those circled questions, then I would grade my exam and see what score I got and see if I missed any questions that I did not circle so I could go back and review those. Granted, this is a really loosey goosey way of going about blind review. There are probably some blind review gods that are trying to smite me right now because they do not like the advice that I'm giving. If you are a new LSAT test taker, I wouldn't do it the way that I just suggested. I would do it the old fashioned way, review every single question on the LSAT, try to understand why you picked each question and then review all the answers and then get your score. But if you're sort of a more advanced LSAT test taker, you're already into your studies quite a bit and you need to save time on blind review, the circling question method has saved me quite a few hours and I would suggest it. I know a couple of you guys might be thinking to yourselves, why blind review? Why is blind review so important? Why does everyone talk about blind review like it's the holy grail and it's the best thing that's ever happened to LSAT practice? And that's because it sort of is. Drilling is not enough. Taking practice tests are not enough. You need to blind review in order to pinpoint what your unique weaknesses and what your unique strengths are. For example, it was only through blind review that I realized that parallel reasoning questions are just not my cup of tea and that I probably needed to skip them and save them for an end of a logical reasoning section in order for me to get through everything else in an effective time. One last thing when it comes to blind review, you want to make sure that you're tracking your data somewhere. So like I showed you guys in my bullet journal, I would track my progress in a table or a line graph. You can do the same thing on any regular notebook or even on an online platform. What matters is that you are tracking your progress and you're adjusting your study routine to your performance. You want your study routine to mold to your needs in real time for your LSAT practice to be as effective as possible. Here are the major takeaways I want you guys to get from today's video. Number one, make sure you're prioritizing consistency over cramming. Your brain learns best when it learns a little bit every day, as opposed to cramming all of its content into one time slot. Drill for at least 30 minutes a day. You will thank yourself. It'll save you time overall, and it'll keep your LSAT skills fresh. Number two, simulate realistic testing conditions. And that just doesn't apply to when you take the test. That applies to your routine the morning of, that applies to your routine as you take the exam, and then applies to taking a break and giving yourself breathing room before blind review. Number three, make sure that you're personalizing your study routine to your blind review needs. Once you identify your weaknesses in blind review, track that data, track those weaknesses down, and crush them before the day of the test. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. If you have any questions related to LSAT studies, please comment below. I'm always happy to help. And please give this video a thumbs up if you found today's content helpful and subscribe for all things LSAT and law school. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.